Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Nurturing Astrology Podcast. I'm Dominique Hadamiel, your astrologer and host. I believe astrology can fast track personal growth, improve lives, and empower parents, and also save relationships, families, and marriages. So, on the Nurturing Astrology Podcast, I will offer practical guidance for applying astrology to all of these important areas of life. I'll offer insight from my own work, studies, and life experiences as well as interview experts to bring you stellar wisdom from other professionals to inspire you on your journey. I'm so glad you're here, and I can't wait to get started. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Nurturing Astrology Podcast. I'm Dominique, your astrologer and host. Today, I'm kicking off a new series. This one is called Cosmic Wisdom and Weather Forecasts, because I want to also have the opportunity to share with you some thoughts and insights and practical tips and strategies for the transits that we're in at the moment or larger transits that we are going through over time. And I want to be able to serve more than just my parents. Of course, I love sharing with my parents and my mamas because conscious parenting and astrology is my passion. But I want to offer some great insight that I can also share beyond that with everyone. So this episode, we're kicking off with Maria Rieger from Positive Parenting with Astrology here on YouTube. So this is a great conversation. We really dove into the breakdown of this entire transit with tips for the different um, aspects it's going to be making during the retrograde time, the direct time, the whole enchilada. You might want to grab a pen and paper very mercurial, Mars in Gemini, and write some things down. I'm literally going to have to watch this thing again and make my own notes. It's worth listening to twice. I can tell you right now, you're going to want to listen to it twice, (laughs) which is perfect for Mars in Gemini. So no further ado, let's dive in and let's talk with Maria Rieger. Hi, Maria. Welcome back. Hi, Dominique. Thanks so much for having me. Always a joy talking to you. Oh, we always have a blast. We've done lots of great talks. Um, there's a lot of fun things we've done. You are my go-to for Gemini season or Mercury retrogrades because you are a Gemini, right? And yes, Gemini- for better or worse, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. And so I was like, let's dive into this long endeavor we're going to have, this journey with Mars in Gemini with my Gemini girl to, you know, give the rundown and some real helpful tools and insights for this long endeavor. Because as we were talking before, there's, there's a lot of really good stuff here, I think, ultimately. And people start freaking out when you, people are talking about a a big transit, a long transit, a retrograde, right? So we're going to break it down for you and give you all the do's and don'ts, ins and outs, and how you can really make the most of this time. And let's dive in. Let's talk about, I'll break it down first. Here's some dates. Mark your calendar. So Mars is already in Gemini. It moved in August 20th. It's going to retrograde October 30th through January 12th of 2023. And then it's going to go direct then through March 25th of 2023. So yeah. Good times, but it is going to be good times. We're going to show you how it can be good times and not bad times. Yes, that's right. (laughs) All right, so we'll break it down. Let's break down Mars in Gemini first. So Mars, cardinal fire, right? The force, the life force energy, action, aggression, assertion, anger, but also that warrior spirit, that pioneering spirit, that impulsive playfulness, you know, reactive um, energy, but then Gemini is mutable air. So that's our thought processes, our thinking, multi, the ability to multitask, be curious, also very social, easily distracted and in multiple directions at once, scattered energy. So these are things to be aware of just in general about this energy together. You've got fire and air, cardinal and mutable. So tell me your thoughts on these two energies together first. So this is going to be an interesting transit. Um, So uh, I like to think of 
Mars and you know st- people with a strong um, Mars or strong Aries as wanting to like assert themselves in the stage of life. It's very action oriented energy, as you said, right? About getting things done. It's a get up and go energy. It's a pick yourself up by your bootstraps. Let's get this done. Sometimes without thinking too much, just acting, right? Yeah. But Gemini, because of the the nature of air, so air covers a lot of you know, uh, breath of subjects, but not very deep, doesn't have as much staying power as the cardinal energy, right? It's, it's a sign that tends to overthink, gives a chart holder kind of this um, propensity to overanalyze, overthink almost to the point of decision paralysis. Mm. So that's why people with strong Gemini energy have this kind of bad reputation of like changing their minds it's because they're always taking in and evaluating data. So, um, so yeah, it's Mars is not super comfortable in an air sign for those reasons. The nature of air is to be more indecisive and Mars needs decision, needs action, right? So in that sense, it's not super comfortable. However, as you as you stated, I think this overall is going to be a positive, generally positive transit for everyone. Um, so um, Gemini gives kind of a more lighthearted, optimistic energy. Yeah. And it gives, it. this transit is going to create a ton of energy in, in the individuals, right? So you're going to feel restless. You're going to feel like that you want to act, this urgency to take action. Mm-hmm. So we caution you to kind of think about that, but not think too much because with the Gemini energy, you can be thinking so much to the point of just complete paralysis. Yeah. And we don't want that either. Right. So, right. So this, this is, this is a good time to kind of get your actions off uh, or get your, you know, get your projects, take your projects off, start them off, get them off the ground, initiate yeah. things. Yeah. Okay. Cause the Gemini energy is going to give a detached, uh, a detached energy to this transit. So as opposed to just the nature of fire, which is just to act without thinking, uh, it's going to give you this detached energy where you can step, take a step back, kind of step outside yourself and, and think about things before you take the action. Right. Yeah. So, and, and also the, you know, the nature of air, air feeds the fire, right? Mm-hmm. So the Gemini energy is going to fan the flames of Mars here into action. Yes. So this is a good time. This is a good time for productive action. And we're going to talk about some more you know productive transits in a few minutes. Yeah, because um, Aries and Gemini are in sextile by nature. Correct. Right? So that right. is a great right. aspect for moving things, opportunity to actually be productive. Right. And they're complementary energies, like we said, right? Air feeds the fire. So, so, um, right. And Mars is about the ego, the individual, how we express our individuality, right? It's a personal planet. It has a lot to do with how we assert ourselves, how we go after our goals and things like that. And Gemini is a freedom loving sign. So those things, those aspects are very complementary. So there's a yeah. lot of, you know, um, there's a lot of potential for really productive things yeah. and productive projects and productive thoughts, having productive thoughts and planning too during this transit. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I've already felt that just in the last week. I don't know about you, but yeah. I, I yeah, for like sure. I, I've like, it was like, it took off. I got fire like boom. And all of a sudden I've been going, going, going. And, and like you said, a lot of little things like ticking off the list already just this week, it's been really productive, right. but right. I do sense what you're saying in terms of like, okay, there can be that overload really easily and ending up by the end of the day or even mid afternoon going, oh my gosh, I'm spinning. Like literally feel like yes. I'm dizzy or have vertigo. <laughs> right. There's a lot of mental restlessness here. Yeah, and so just- you had, a, yeah. And you just said a really good like tip for people. If you're just feeling completely overwhelmed, but you have this urge to act, you can, you know, make a list of like things that can be done very quickly, mm-hmm. take them off and you will almost instantly feel better. Like I'm getting things done. I'm being productive, you know, and that, and then you can tackle more kind of long-term or projects and activities yes. and tasks that may take longer to do, yeah. but if you're going to feel better if you can tick off, check off all these things that are easily yep. accomplished. I was Just writing do them and you'll this feel morning better. of yep. to-dos, right? And I like yeah. a list of things I want to do today. They're like do, 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 little things. And right. then I had a second page where I started to write things that I knew were going to take me a little bit more time or a little more research. Right. And I automatically felt a little bit different and like a little, yeah. like, a little more daunting, like, oh man, that's going to be a lot more time. Right. It's so I was like, right. Oh yeah. I'm going to focus on these little things and we're in yes. Virgo season. So it's perfect to utilize that energy to focus on those detailed 
tick, tick, ticks, get those off. Yep. And is if it feels when you put it on the list, like, oh, much bigger. Okay. Let's wait or break that down into a few little things that can be done to, like you say, get that off the ground or get that moving just a little bit forward. Right. Right. Exactly. This is actually a really good time to do organization at home and declutter because we're in Virgo season. So I, yeah, absolutely. And like, if you could just, just like, if it's, if that's too overwhelming, because decluttering for me is always overwhelming now, (laughs) like just take like one room or even one table and be like, I'm going to declutter this table today. Mm -hmm. And you will, you know, you'll, you'll feel better. (laughs) Oh yeah, absolutely. I do. I, I have, Virgo rules my fourth house. And so I always feel better when my house is clean, you know, or I can pick up, like you say, one little area can make me feel so much better. Right. And to your point, like there is power in writing things down because now it's like, there's one less thing or two less things I have, I have to remember. I feel better that I won't forget this. I may not get to it today, but I won't forget it because Gemini deals so much with written language and communication. This is actually a really good time to make those, like you said, those to-do lists, yeah. right? And I'll, I do them like every morning and every night, like every night, like, what am I going to do? What do I have planned for tomorrow? This, 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 and this, and I'll write it down. And I'll be like, yeah. now I can go to sleep. <laughs> yeah. And that'll help you be able to rest and know that it's out of your brain too. Right. right. Exactly. Yeah. And it makes more root more room in your brain for other things because it is impossible to to carry all this stuff around in your head all the time it is i think that's a great to do so if you're not someone who's like usually good at writing lists you might actually feel more motivated to do that now and find it more helpful you know because a lot of times you know you can just have it in your mind and go through your day and and take care of everything and not want to write it down but maybe this is a time where you feel an impetus or a motivation to go, you know what, that is going to be helpful. Let me try that and see how I feel about actually ticking it off, you know? Right. So right. I think that there are great ways to nurture the nature of this energy in a positive way, even though there, there can be moments of frustration or irritability or, you know, overwhelm those being aware of those things is key. And then you can go, exactly. okay, I understand why I feel this way. I understand the energies right now. So let me breathe. Exactly. Gemini, let me ground. And I literally have, I'll share a little thing. I'll share a little thing. So I literally have this huge rock on my desk. It's a stone. And sometimes I will literally lay it in my lap when I'm sitting here working or I'll hold it in my hand because I don't have a ton of air in my chart. I mean, a ton of air, a ton of earth. And so I'm wanting to like ground myself. Right hold myself down. So I'll literally use it like almost like an anchor sometimes and set it in my lap or hold on to it to remind me, stay here, stay present, breathe, take your time, slow down. <laughs> Cause I right. talk a mile a minute sometimes too. This is going to put me on like overdrive as you can probably tell. <laughs> same, same. <laughs> I have to force good, myself but... to slow, speak more slowly. Like I have to force myself. I to do, do it. too. I have so many but... people tell me you speak so same. <laughs> so we'll breathe. We'll slow down. We'll try and practice what we preach. And yeah, so there's a lot of great stuff we've talked about here in terms of the positives too, right? Did you go through that list that you were talking about? We definitely want to align our body and mind, you know, moving promotes clarity, thinking before we speak, really, you know, having that impetus to slow down, be wearing of burnout. Um, Right. All those, sorry, go ahead, Dominique. No, no, that's okay. Just keeping your word, right? And being mindful of what you're saying. And I was listening to Ann Ortley the other day and she said, you know, be prepared for people saying one thing and doing another or plan twice, you know, and the duality of things, you may be doing things more than once. It's almost like, and we'll get into this, the whole energy of Mars and Gemini can feel like a retrograde because of the duality of Gemini. And like, you're going back and forth or in this direction and then that direction, we're all juggling all the things. And so we can feel that we're not getting much done. But what we're saying is this can be an actual really great time to act and get things done. A lot of little things and feeling really accomplished at the end of it. So let's dive into some of the transits. You had shared some of the great transits um, on a, from a big picture. And then we'll go into the actual Mars retrograde itself and, and that period. Sure. So, um, I- and like you mentioned, I, you know, any grounding activities are fantastic to do during this trance. Like you already mentioned some journaling, meditation, 
We walks outside. That's how I ground yes. myself, like solo walks, just to clear your head. Um, and you can even have kids and older kids do these things, right? Mm-hmm. The journaling, oh, the yeah. meditation, but also the walks. And the parents can definitely expect some, like you said, Dominique, irritability, impulsivity yeah. from the kids, kids changing their minds. This is normal during this transit. You know, it's something to weather. It's temporary, right? But we'll we'll see all that stuff. That's so important to remember that it's temporary. Right, yeah. exactly. <laughs> but yes, yeah. um, as you said, we we are coming out of a lot of kind of heavy transits and a lot of interesting transits are going to happen during the seventh month period and Mars and Gemini. Obviously, it's because it's so long, it's going to make, you know, many transits, but many of them are going to be very positive. Um it is important to note we're like just coming out of this Uranus Mars North Node conjunction, this once in a lifetime conjunction. Mm-hmm. So, you know, even though this Mars and Gemini transit is is not, you know, necessarily always going to be comfortable, like the universe always provides you the transits and the energy you need in the moment you need them. So we're coming out of this Uranus Mars North Node conjunction, right? Now, whatever came out of that for you, it's Mm -hmm. kind of like this transit is kind of giving you some space and detachment to think about things and analyze and also to take action. Like you do have permission to take action during this Mars and Gemini transit. We're not saying this is not a good time to act. If the universe is pushing you, compelling you to act, take the action, make the decision. You you have permission to do that, right? Whatever you feel called to do. Um, Right. And so Uranus just started its retrograde around the 24th so just yeah. a couple of days ago so that's gonna it, you know turn all that energy intern you know, in, internally obviously so we're going to be pondering a lot of things um and aquarian related themes like themes of rebellion and revolution and radical change so you may be thinking a lot about that during this time yeah. right and risk and take trying new yes. things getting outside of that fixed box like i was saying like I'm trying lots of different things and seeing what feels good, what what people respond to, what my audience might like, my groups might like. And that's a big part of Aquarian energy or fixed energy being sort of rattled during this time with that Uranus squaring the fixed signs. Right, exactly. Um, and then we actually have tomorrow, Mars will be squaring the sun. Mars and Gemini mm-hmm. will be squaring the sun in, in Virgo, right? So that's not a super comfortable Uh, transit obviously but it's short-lived okay and it may be difficult to reconcile those energies but again you don't have to make any decisions or take any actions right now okay you can think about it uh then we have the new moon new moon in virgo happening which is new beginnings and new projects again a great time to get out your journal and write down everything you want to accomplish over the next 30 day moon cycle and also over the next seven months right that mars is in gemini uh because you will have the energy to get things done (laughs) Yes. And I even had thought about writing intentions tomorrow about having the intention to slow down and do take the physical action that will allow me to have the clarity of thought so that the answers to my questions or, you know, what to do or when to do it kind of can come in and, Mm -hmm. you know, setting up Virgo um, routines and, and good habits that set you up for this long journey. You know, so here we are, it's squaring in through tension going, okay, what can I do to really set myself up for success for the next seven months? And what kind of really good habits and routines and things can I get in place that will actually help me stay grounded and focused and being able to really harness the energy of this transit for the, for the best, for my life, for my family, for my kids, all of that. Right. Right. It's a great time to do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, we'll have the new moon Virgo. Then Mars will make a sextile to Jupiter right after that. Mars will make a sextile to Saturn. Yeah. Okay. That's very exciting. So when Mars is sextiling Jupiter, you're going to see like all these possibilities for yourself opening up. And that's going to be very exciting, right? You're going to, your horizons are expanding, your worldview is expanding. That's fantastic. So use that energy to kind of plan and th- even daydream about like all the possibilities, yeah. right? Because mm-hmm. literally uh, you know, if you follow law of attraction pro- you know, principles, which we do, like, you know, any, almost anything, absolutely anything is possible in the universe, as long as you can dream it and believe that it happens. So that's a really good transit to kind of just think about all the possibilities that are open to you. Very exciting. Yeah. So right after that, Mars will be sextiling Saturn. This is a very productive aspect. It's also a very good aspect for long-term relationships because Saturn gives long-term relationships 
a lot of staying power, right? Saturn connection, Saturn um, yeah. uh, transits. So that's going to be, that's going to be very, very productive. Um, yeah. I don't know if there's anything you want to say about that, Dominique, before we talk about the rest of the transits. I want to talk about the final Saturn Uranus square, which is kind of a big deal. <laughs> yes, that is. <clears throat> no, I think those are great. The, the Mars, those positive aspects to those outer planets. You know, that was something that we were talking about before is that all these outer planets are retrograde now. And so you've got that happening, but and Mercury will go retrograde, but you do have the impetus to act still, like not to get caught up in all of these, um, oh, is it time to do this? Is it time to do that? Like you said, if you're feeling that energy and that mm -hmm. impetus to act, go for it. Don't worry about the transit. Don't worry about it. Right. And if you, and being really mindful, if you feel like you're, when in doubt, don't, that's my theory, right? If you're really doubting it, then don't, then wait, give yourself some time. But if you're feeling really compelled and, and, and energized and excited, don't let that hold you back. Right. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Because I think what you are going to go into next, and I think is the bigger point is that we've been doing a lot of work over the last couple years or more with yes. some major energies. So talk to the final Saturn Uranus square and the Pluto stationing and stuff. Yeah. So this is, it gets a little bit heavy <laughs> yeah. later on, but also all good stuff at the end of the day. Yeah. So um, you guys have probably heard, you know, Saturn and Uranus have been kind of, uh, we've built through a couple of Saturn Uranus squares. We've had two of them. The second one was on my birthday. It was fantastic. Of course, I have Uranus square Saturn in my natal chart. So it's like business as usual for me, right? Yeah. But yeah. The final big Saturn Uranus square is coming up in like late September, early October. So because this is the last one until around the year 2043, mm, this wow. is any issues that were brought up in the previous two squares. This is kind of like the final act. So Hopefully, and we had more of them the year before. There was like, what, seven in that yeah, one? Yeah, we had like a ton at some yes. point. Yeah, this is like this the, is the a, last major one. Right, yeah. last major one. This has been a much right. bigger cycle. So, and yeah. I know a lot of people feel like we're, these last few years, have, we've all felt like so rattled and forced to make so many changes mm -hmm. that we are kind of coming to the end of that and settling into what those real changes are for us and how we want to move forward or structure our lives from here. Right, exactly. So hopefully this gives you after the square, you'll have a little bit more clarity on how to do that. Yeah. Right. Especially you could still be utilizing the Mars and Gemini energy and mm -hmm. then the transits that we're about to talk about for that. Speaking of um, <laughs> around October 8th or 9th, Pluto finally stations direct. That's a good thing. Yep. At the same time, there's going to be a full moon in Aries. This has a strong, this is like a strong culmination aspect, right? Pluto's stationing direct. Yes. So hopefully all the wounds you had to clean out are going to be mm. mostly cleaned out. And the full moon in Aries is like, this is the culmination of you. This is you, the individual, the ego at your best, embodying the highest version of yourself right now, right? I and if you want that. to raise your vibration instantly, that's it. this is actually a, a law of manifestation practitioner actually taught me this. That's what you say. I am embodying the highest version of myself right now. So this, this aspect, kind of this dual aspect is really representative of that statement. Like this is a very strong, powerful aspect of culmination and self-realization. I think it's going to be very exciting. A little heavy, but very, very exciting. Powerful. You feel the weight yes. and also the power of that. I got yeah. chills. I got chills like that. I think that's very awesome. powerful. So very cool. powerful transit. Say that statement yeah. one more time. It's I am embodying the highest version of myself right now or at this moment. Yes. Right. I yeah. love it. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna write that um, <laughs> right after that, a couple about a week and a half after that. So around the 20th of October, Venus is going to square Pluto. Not always a comfortable transit. Okay. Right. So be mindful of relationships. You don't want to say anything too cutting or that could be construed as too hurtful, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. There's a tendency to be overly jealous or possessive anytime kind of mm -hmm. Venus and Pluto do a, tr do a kind of a hard transit yeah. like that. Yeah. So all your one-on-one -on -one relationships, you want to be, you want to be really careful. I have a Scorpio kid, as many of you mm -hmm. know, Dominique knows. So, you know, when he was little, sometimes he would say cutting things just to like hurt me because it's or get a reaction nature, it's the nature of the side when they feel like when they're emotionally hurting they will try to emotionally hurt someone else 
And once you understand that about the sign, not to go off on a tangent too much, it becomes easier the weather. Yeah. It's not really about you. It's about the fact that the person saying the statement is emotionally in pain for some reason. We're able to detach from that. Exactly. That personally, that's true. Right, right. But so Venus or Pluto, yeah, it's a temporary transit. So just watch your words and your actions in mm-hmm. one-on-one relationships around that time. Yeah. And then six days later on October 26th, we have the solar eclipse in Scorpio. Yep. And I know, Dominique, eclipse we want to season. talk a little bit around that right now. <laughs> yeah, we definitely, we move into eclipse season. I know it's going to be a big focus. And I know, again, these are things people hear about and they start to like stress about it, you know, already. What's going to happen? What's going to be the big change? Because eclipses are inertia shifters, right? But we yeah. were looking at, well, hey, what's Mars do- doing during this time? Because it is the ruler, right? The the ancient, or, yeah, ancient ruler, the modern ruler is Pluto. But Mars is actually going to be trying Venus conjunct the sun in Libra for this eclipse. And that's really positive energy. And that Absolutely. brings a lot of opportunity to, to act and do things on from this new place of, like you said, on the other side of this Aries full moon and really mm-hmm. embodying who you truly are and empower right. and feeling empowered in that. And then starting to go, okay, I feel comfortable making these changes or these statements now about what exactly. I want for my life and for exactly. who I am. Right. And once you're accepting of yourself, the highest version of yourself, now you can bring that to your relationships because that's what we want to do. Ideally, we're bringing, you know, you work on yourself before you work on your relationships. That's the yes. old adage, right? So you want to bring the highest version of yourself to your relationships with your kids, with your partner, with everybody, right? Yes. And like something I talk about a whole a ton on my channel is like, if you, as the parent, if you have any healing work to do from your own childhood, you need to do it. Having a kid will force you to do it, right? Yep. Otherwise, you just perpetuate old cycles. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is yeah, this is really good. The um, Mars trine and Venus to conjunct the sun will be a really good aspect for relationships yeah. at the time. Yeah, especially Venus and the sun being in Libra at the time. Yeah. Or yeah. The, yeah. And so the final aspect I think we'll mention, we won't go into the retrograde, is Mars square Neptune, yes. which will happen three times. Once. October 10th with Mars still direct moving forward. And then once when it's retrograde, November 14th, and then again on March 10th, 2023 direct. And this is warnings of disillusion and maybe acting out of fear rather than inspiration. And so I think that's a good one to note those dates because we are if you really lean into the inspiration and the possibilities, as we even have our full moon in Pisces um, next month, to really lean into the possibilities and trusting the signs and signals and that things will work out. I think trusting the universe is, you know, not an easy thing to do, even for the people who believe that you are co-creating right. with it, right? right? But really leaning into that and not taking action out of fear rather than really feeling that it's a true calling for you or true inspiration. And yes, there's a lot of uncertainty and unknowns about what can happen. So Mars and Neptune can be like fear of the unknown and making actions out of fear rather than feeling like, oh, possibilities, maybe this, maybe that. I feel really called and I'm feeling really aligned and I know who I am now and I have to take a chance. I have to take a a risk. And trust the universe has got me and that I'll get, I'll be caught or I'll be supported or I'll be guided just the way I'm supposed to, you know, to be. So I do think that's a huge kind of big one to pay attention to um, over the course of this larger transit. Absolutely. Right. With Neptune, you know, you may, Neptune tends to fog or cloud issues. So yes. you may not have all the answers, but like you say, the upside is it you know, gives you the power to dream about these endless possibilities yes. and absolutely let yourself dream during that yes. time. Right. Just and I, you know. yeah. And I tell this to my, my Uber Pisces son. Okay. Who happens to have like, you know, Neptune's been going over all his Pisces planets for like the whole most part of his life here now. Right. You know, so, and he, I tell him you have this powerful imagination it's amazing. And the stuff that comes out of there is so cool and inspiring. But at the same time, he recognizes that that can be his own downfall. His mind can create worst case scenarios. Mm -hmm. And then he's afraid to do things or he gets really nervous and scared or worried unnecessarily because it's all, all the imagination just running wild, you know, right? So I have to pay attention for him with this aspect squaring for him 
that he's going to have those moments of, you know, am I, I, I'm, I'm afraid when he's not really afraid. He's just created this, you know, fear of his own making this nightmare of his own making. Right. Thing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Catastrophizing and things like that. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so I feel like that is something I realize now I'm going to have to be very aware of for my right. son. Exactly. Even as much as for myself, you know, that's a good point. Exactly. So let's dive into Mars retrograde. Mars retrograde. Oh. <laughs> you know, go retrograde, like literally the day before Halloween too. Yeah. So everybody have a safe Halloween. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Right. So Mars, uh, Mars will be retrograde. Let's see. Um, October 30th through about the, uh, middle of January. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. So what do we say? Um, there is the potential because Mars is going to be a Gemini and Gemini is, you know, associated with like, you know, uh, quick witty banter, but also sometimes sarcasm and snark. Uh -huh. So you want to be really careful. God, my son, he's a moon in Gemini and he's Mercury conjunct the sun. He has a comeback for everything, literally everything. Well, he's going to anyway. have more now. Oh yeah. He's, yeah he's, <laughs> I, I can't wait. I can't wait. Let me tell you. Anyway, so with Mars retrograding in Gemini, there's going to be the potential for these kind of cutting, sarcastic, snarky comments. Mm -hmm. So parents, be careful. Be careful with talking to your kids, talking to your partners, talking to people important to you. You mm -hmm. want to check yourself before before you, be you know, let yourself. those things, right before you wreck yourself, right? Or before you say things that you're going to regret later. Because like I tell parents, saying stuff like that may make you feel good to blow off steam for a few seconds and then you're full of regret, right? It's yeah. happened to me. I'm full of regret yeah. and then I feel terrible. Guilty. So just think about it. Think of maybe you think about it in your mind, say it to yourself, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. before saying it to your kids and your partner. So yeah. that, and there's also the tendency for passive aggressive comments. Gemini is an energy that does not like direct confrontation. Like air, it goes around obstacles. So pass, pass, being passive aggressive can very, you know, strong, be very strongly associated with mm -hmm. Gemini energy. Mm -hmm. um, I've had to learn to, you know, not to be passive aggressive. So, but with the Mars and Gemini retrograded, there is the, pot, the potential for those passive aggressive comments, which are not helpful. If you have an issue, yes. take a cue from the Mars energy and hit it, you know, address it head on. Yes. In a kind, loving way, but address it head on. Don't yes. be passive aggressive, make passive aggressive statements. Because when parents do that to kids, kids grow up and they'd be passive aggressive, they continue that. And it, it's a failure to communicate ultimately. Yeah. So you want to be very careful about that. <laughs> be clear about what you're communicating in a loving, kind way, but be clear about it. Yeah. Um, what we said, watch your words, your tone, your temper, where Mars is involved. There's always a possibility for, you know, you know, emotional overreaction. Watch all that stuff. Yeah. And so you need to overreact. Think before you act, definitely even more. Throughout the entire Mars and Gemini transit, you want to think before you act. When it's in retrograde, even more so. Be very careful about that. Yeah. Um, with with Mars retrograding, it's a good time to study and reflect because Gemini is involved. Good time to study, mm -hmm. and like like we said earlier, you can take any action that you feel compelled to take. You can take it right if the universe is forcing, basically forcing you to take an action. Take it, but don't act for the sake of acting, especially when Mars is in retrograde. Um, like we said, if you have just an overabundance of energy, go for a hike, do something physical, write down your list of stuff, do the, you know, the easy things first, all those things, but use the energy productively. Right. Yes. So those are kind of the big Mars retrograde tips. Anything you want to add, Dominique? Well, I think you, I think you hit a lot of the great stuff I would have said too. And I, I just want to reiterate that. I think we said this already <laughs> double right? Might say it again. Yep. You might be repeating yourself. Note to self. Um, but also that because Gemini is a dualistic sign, we're going to feel a little bit like we're in a, a retrograde period this entire time. We might be doing things more than once. You might need a backup. You might be having to, you know, uh, redo things, do things over. I always say, you know, make plans and and go for it, but then kind of maybe allow, hey, this plans might change. If you warn people that you might change your mind or you're not real sure, it's the nature of the time we're in. Maybe then feelings aren't hurt so much if you do have to change your mind or things do, plans do get messed up, right? right? So I do feel like what you're saying here about Mars retrograde and the snarkiness or the passive aggressiveness, these comments can be very much the little irritability, the things mm -hmm. in a day that can tick you off real quick. Like I've already had a few of those scenarios and I've heard stories from other people, right? Then it's really noting, okay, so 
let me just take, take a beat here. Right. So I think that all the things that you said are things we also can be very aware of during this entire, this right. entire Mars and Gemini season, but it will become stronger during that retrograde portion. And so it's even more important to then dial it back and be, have that extra awareness to go, okay, we're in retrograde. So I may have less of an ability to hold my tongue actually, or maybe it will help me hold my tongue. If during the the direct portions, I'm just flying off the handle, right? So it can be either way, depending on your nature, how much air you have natally in your chart, you know, how much you pop off in real life or how, right. It might give you the impetus to finally speak up. If you're not somebody who's able to typically do that, you know, and right. say no more often than always yesing, right? So there's right. there's a, a duality in this. There are literally both sides of the coin here to be aware of. And knowing your own chart and your own nature helps you understand how to, to tune in and hone in for making the most of it for yourself individually. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. so, and to the point you were talking about earlier about uh, taking action, should we act or should we not act? Like you could always revise things later. If you feel compelled yes. to act or compelled to begin a project, you know, you could always revise things a little later. You definitely yeah. want to think about, you know, think twice about making any like decisions that are going to have a long-term impact, especially during Mars retrograde, yeah. but anything else, especially starting new projects, starting new businesses, you yeah. know, if you can take some steps toward that and always revise as you go. I mean, so much of that you know, especially entrepreneurship, things like that is learning as you go and what works and what doesn't yes. work. Yes. So don't, you know, you know, I, I see a lot of people failing to act because they're perfectionists and they only want to act once when it's perfect. That is so just yes. difficult to do and near impossible. Yeah. Look, it, it's just not, you know, it's, it's not going to happen. Everything is yep. not going to be perfect the first time and that's okay. Yeah. Right. I'm, especially I'm during Virgo, good message during Virgo season. Too. It really is. <laughs> It really, really is. And I'm guilty of it. And I have to say, it's like being aware of the energies of having to shake things up, break things up. It's like, to make the change or the change, it will change you. Like, you know what I mean? So be the change or be changed. And I think that that's the inspiration is to just go for it, to let go of the needing to be it perfect. And I'm definitely working on it myself. I definitely have that impetus to you know, want to be prepared and make sure Sure. that it's all good, all, you know, right, have the right answers, the right things to say. And now it's like, got to throw that caution to the wind. And it's actually more honest and vulnerable to be like, I don't know. Right. (laughs) Just don't know. I'm doing my best here. I'm trying. These are my thoughts. And, and, um, you know, I'm not real sure how that's going to manifest. Right. You know, I mean, look, nobody gives you a, a, a you know, a, a guide on how to parent and nobody gives you a manual nope. for life either. You yeah. know, even if, if you're, whether you're a parent or not, nobody gives you a manual for life. We're all figuring this yeah. stuff out. I did a so. great interview with Molly McCord this week and we really went into that. It's like, you do have this great manual for your child. There's such great information to have, but ultimately it, it then gives you the freedom to relax and realize this child has its own journey, its own soul. And we can't know hundred percent what's going to happen. We're not supposed to. The idea right. is to learn as we go, but this knowledge and understanding of the framework of our children, it does give us information on how to right. respond. Mars and Gemini, right? It gives us information on how to react, how not to react, the kinds mm-hmm. of questions to ask or not to ask, mm-hmm. the kind of space to provide. Right. It, it gives us direction. And that's a manual right. directions. It doesn't mean that when you do, you know, you do all follow the steps that it's going to come out a specific way. It's not like putting exactly. a piece of furniture together. Exactly. And even that you can get wrong, right? Yep. Oh <laughs> it's yeah. All wonky. You know what I mean? So, but I do think that that's the liberation portion of astrology. It can liberate you. The power can liberate you as opposed to, conf- and it can confine you. And people try right. to, what do you call it? Like self-fulfilling prophecies, right? Absolutely. So absolutely. That's the awareness now too, is the information coming in can inform our actions as opposed to us acting based on the, you know, um, what someone's telling us or it doesn't feel right. Or I mean, right. Right. Not, I mean, not everybody has your best interest at heart, right. At the end of the day. Mm. Right. I I mean, and, and not, you know, not everyone, I mean, not everyone is going to understand who you yeah. are, the individual is, right? Especially yeah. those of us who, you know, are more reserved, you know, Capricorn moon about feelings and find it very difficult yeah. to be vulnerable. It's hard. Like, I feel like it's hard 
to be known, but that's also kind of of my own making <laughs> because yep. it's just my nature, right? Yeah. So, but not everybody, don't assume that people are going to know you 100%. Like you have to state your truth too. Talk yeah. about the power of words and the power of communication, right? So all that stuff's important. Absolutely. Yeah. And speaking of communication, what a great segue into what I was looking at in terms yes. of a huge proponent of this to be aware of. And that is that Mars in Gemini, Gemini is ruled by Mercury. So what is happening here is Mars will be answering to Mercury for the next seven months. So you can't not pay attention to what our friend Mercury is doing. And we already know he's about, he's in Libra now and about to go retrograde, but in dualistic fashion here, there will be two Mercury retrogrades during the passage of Mars through Gemini. I mean, I feel like it's That's, cosmic. It's meant to be yeah, that we have yeah, two. Like it was supposed yeah, to be. <laughs> yeah. Like you said, the duality of the it. The duality. So we have two Mercury retrogrades during this larger phase. And the first one coming up here in Libra, back into Virgo. And then in Capricorn at the very end of the year, December 29th. Mm. It goes retrograde into January of next year. So it's important to pay attention to what Mercury is doing at any given time because it's informing our actions. It's giving us even more information about how we feel about what we're doing or if what we want to change or how we're speaking, how we're you know communicating with others. And definitely the looking at sort of the aspects of it, like we know that Libra is a sister sign to Gemini. So mm -hmm. there's some positives here to this, the, the ability to really communicate well, to have compassion with our words and kindness. And then when it moves into Virgo, even that's a ruling sign. So it's like, like you said, getting our, our health in line with our minds and bodies. That's a positive, right? And then even in Capricorn, you're thinking, oh, well, that's, that may be a little bit harder, but Capricorn's exalted right? When it's Mars is in Capricorn is exalted right. and, but it's still have to watch our actions, but we'll be maybe more, a little bit more slow down and precise and strategic about them. And like you said before, not acting at for the sake of acting, but right. really with an intention and with a purpose. And that right. will be something that can be revisited is why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. Is this important to me? Mm -hmm. You know, why am I saying this or why am I behaving this way in a, in a relationship or with somebody or, with or what are the consequences of my what are actions, the consequences right? of my actions? Right. What have I witnessed and realized that's happened in my life based on how I've acted based on the things I've said and the responses I've gotten from other people or in relationship to our children or our partners. Right. And so this is all information that's going to be informing us even more. And so in between that, at the end of October, Mercury will go into Scorpio just as Mars goes retrograde, right, through November. And that's a sesqui square to that energy. So it's kind of like a minor aspect that can be a little bit irritating and, and mm -hmm. frustrating. Um, so it's an emotional, right, when you're dealing with Scorpio. So you've got a lot more emotion and maybe saying some snarky things. This might be when your son kind of starts popping up mm -hmm. a little extra, right? Yep. Yep. <laughs> and you go, okay, I understand where you're at. Right. I need to work extra hard at not taking that personally. Right. And know that you are just really feeling this energy intensely too, you know, and being right. mindful of your words during that time. And then in uh, November 17th through December 7th, it's in Mercury will be in Sag. So it'll be opposing that Mars, you'll go through an opposition mm -hmm. there. And so it'd be like, okay, am I saying this and doing that? Am I asking for that? And then not really following through on my part. There's that pu push pull, right? Mm -hmm. That could come in to play around the end of the year. And then, like I said, the Capricorn, I move into Capricorn and it's like, oh, we're at the end of the year. That's when we start doing our assessments, our year end, you know, mm -hmm. evaluations of what we've accomplished, what we want right. to do next year and start working out, hey, what's the plan for 2023, man? Right. What do I want to do? Where am I at now? So it's always yep. a good time. And so yep. I think it's kind of perfect that Mercury's retrograde during that time because that's what everyone's doing. Absolutely. You know? That's going to be very supportive energy for that. The year in review, like, is this year what I want it to be? You know, what, what can I do to improve for next year? It's is a really, really yeah. supportive energy for that, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, just to get you into the next year a little bit, Mercury will be in Aquarius for February 11th through the 3rd. That's a trine, another fellow air mm -hmm. sign. 
So yep. here we are. Okay, February, like, let her, let's go. What are we going to get doing here? It's the new year. It's the, January's over. I know what I want to do. Let's go do it, right? And all these new ideas we're going to put into action now that we've been thinking about the last six months or working on the last six months and start fine tuning those things. And then when Mercury moves into Pisces, that's again a square March 2nd through the 18th. So we're like, okay, wait a minute. I'm tired now. Have yeah. I really paced myself correctly over the seven months or am I exhausted? Am I overwhelmed? Am I flat out? Like, do I need some downtime? You know what I mean? Or is it really deep dive more into the imaginative work or the creative projects and really just right. losing ourselves in all that joy of what we're creating that's been in our heads for so long that we're now taking action on, you know? So right, exactly. again, it could be one or the other. And then finally, Mars um, will be heading out of Gemini and into Cancer mm -hmm. March 25th. And Mercury will be in Aries, Mars is signed from March 18th to April 3rd. That's right. So that's, it ends kind of on a high note, yeah. right? Yeah. So it, it's really, it's really cool to be like, sweet, like, let's go. I'm like really on fire now, you know? Right. So I really feel that it is important to pay attention, this mind body thing with Mars and Gemini, and then realizing what's happening with Mercury at the same time, we're following this Mars cycle mm -hmm. can really help inform us and guide us in how we take action and when, and really making sure that we're tuned into why we're taking the action, the, you know, the, the search for the curiosity of why we're doing what we're doing. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The Gemini energy gives you a really supportive, mm -hmm. you know, way of doing that, of detaching and, and acting yes. and, and considering, is this, like you said, is this what I want to be doing? Am, am I, you know, um, is this how I'm handling my relationships? Is this how I'm handling like my life in general, yeah, right? My job, and, whatever it is. Right. And those, these Mercury retrograde periods are really like, like you said, like good opportunities to revise and review any actions that we took during the Mars and in, in Gemini transit and continue to take. Yeah. So those are periods of, of, to review, reflect upon that and make any changes necessary you know, not everything is final and finite. So yes, uh, you can change your mind about things. So as long as you kind of realize that, that not everything is, is finite and, and final, then you kind of give, you kind of give yourself a little less, less pressure, take some of the pressure mm -hmm. off of yourself. Mm -hmm. Right. So, mm -hmm. so just remember that. And those, the Mercury retrograde transits are, are temporary, right? So yes. won't always be, things will always be haywire. Yes. Exactly. That's why, hey, we're talking about making that backup, having that second option, mm -hmm. that second, you know, you know, buy two of things just in case <laughs> you can always right, return right. one. You know what like I mean? Like you said, you may have to do things twice. Yeah. If, I mean, even with when Mars is in Gemini and during the Mercury retrograde, there's always a potential for technological snafus. There just is. I had one earlier today. So, <laughs> so yeah. as long as you tell yourself that, take it in stride, you know, don't let it get to you. Exactly. I mean, we are talking Mercury here that Mars is answering to the entire time. Yep. So there's exactly. miscommunications on multiple levels, exactly. you know, car issues, you know, our tra transportation issues, you know, diff air travel. I mean, we're yep. over the holidays. I mean, it's going to be, oh, yeah. you know, we're, yeah. we're definitely dealing with challenges in all of these areas over the next seven months. And so it's important because we can get really ticked off really easy. And like you said, say things we don't mean. And so it's important to right. be really positive. And I think on that note, you had mentioned earlier that the law of attraction mm -hmm. and our, I always tell my son, like positive attitude goes a long, long way and can make right. all the difference. And when I see him, watch him going down a spiral, like, you know, you're kind of spiraling, like let's let's take a positive attitude. And I have a great story that I will share. I've been talking to Joseph about, that's my son's name, to, you know, the power of this positive attitude and that we attract what mm -hmm. we put out. And what you were saying earlier, if you focus on that negative, mm -hmm. that's what you're going to attract. Yes. And perfect for Virgo season. We have been given the, um, well, it's a possibility because we'll see how it works out, but we've been given a dog. Oh, wow. Yeah. And it's an 18 month old lab. And my first reaction was, oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> 
because guess who's going to take care of it all the yeah, time. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. You know, I went we... right down the rabbit yeah. hole. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. Okay, wait a minute. And then I thought about it's Virgo season, how I really, you know, my child's age, the positive attitude. If I have these negative things and thoughts about what it's going to do to my family, it will do that to my mm-hmm. family. So I have to take this positive attitude and look at the things that it can provide us getting out as a family, my son stepping up and taking care of this animal, walking, us all getting Mm -hmm. out and getting more physical activity, you know, the joy the dog could bring, right? There's all these great things about it. And so I've been working on shifting my own mindset around it so that I can be an example for my son. And we went yesterday and bought a few things uh, because he's supposed to come this weekend. And it's National Dog Day. How fun is this? Oh my God. And um, hopefully our dog, actually, they get along. But I I bought these few things and I'm like really positive. I'm thinking about all this good stuff and imagining all the wonderful things it can do for our family and what, you know, being positive in my sense. So how are you feeling about it right now? And I said, well, I'm going to practice what I preach to you, Joseph. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do what I always tell you to do, which is I'm going to manifest through positive Mm -hmm. mindset and energy, all the great things that this little guy could bring to our family right? and not focus on the negatives or my worries or concerns right? and show you like the power of this, right? I'm already in a better mood. I'm already a little bit excited, you know, so it changes the energy, the dynamic and oh, yeah. the hopes of it actually working out are tenfold, right? And he was yeah. like, what happens if it doesn't work out? And we bought these things or whatever. I said, well, then that'll be just be for our next animal, right? We'll right. just save those. And you know, it is exactly. what it is. But still, you have to make the effort to have that positive approach or mm-hmm. you're just going to attract all the things you don't want. That's right. You know, like, I, you know, I, if things, if you just think that things always work out, for the best, they yeah. always work out for the best. Like if you truly believe that, but if you catastrophize yes. and catastrophes are going to happen, because like you yeah. say, you are attracting, you know, yeah. that's the vibration you're on. That's the energy you're attracting. Like attract, yeah. like attracts like, that's the saying, right? So. And that's exactly what I've done. I've been this person who's always believed that things ultimately work out the way they should. But I've also been the one who ends up taking care of every animal that we have. Oh, I understand that. We have two dogs. And I have told my son, he wants to, he's been lobbying for a cat. I said, under no circumstances <laughs> are we getting a cat. I said, any cats you guys bring home will be returned. Sorry yeah. to say, I am not taking care of another pet. Yep. And so that's where <clears throat> boundaries, hello, nope. Virgo Pisces uh, axis here, time for boundaries. And right. so I have used this opportunity to have a positive attitude, but also set the example for my son that I have laid down mm-hmm. and my husband, I have laid down these new boundaries. Mm-hmm. I am not in a position to take on responsibility of anything else. And so I will be the last one in line to take care of this dog. And this will be the temporary period of, Hey, let's see how it goes. Mm-hmm. I'll be positive about That's it. Right. I'll have a positive mindset. And if it doesn't work the minute you are, not, you two are not holding up your end of the bargain, we find him another home. Right. And we have to agree on that. Right. And we right. agreed on that. And so we'll see what happens, but that's me also creating a healthy boundary. Right. And, and saying, okay, like I love taking care of my family, but I do way too much than I probably you know, need to, and you're getting older. It's time to step up and take care of yourself. This is a great opportunity for you right. and for my family. So I am trying to stay positive and attract all the best. Exactly. Right. And exactly. be a good example for my child. Right. You know? So, and it's perfect for Virgo season that we're talking about animals and pets. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> and as soon as I was like, oh my God, we're going into Virgo season. Of course, we're going to get this animal. Of course, we're going to get this dog. And it's going to teach us all the lessons that we all need to learn right now. Right. Whether it stays or goes. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Right. And trust the process that whatever happens will be for the best. Yeah. Right. So exactly. and I think that's a great, like overall theme of the Mars and Gemini period, which Mm -hmm. will be a long one, you know, but, um, yeah. And so do you have any final like thoughts about really, really key things that parents should stay honed in on over the next seven months and, you know, for the parents and for your parents, you know, on your channel, if you're watching as well, I know there's a lot. Yeah. So much. Um, I would say, I would say that this, the Mars and Gemini transit is a really good time to do projects together with your kids, whether it's 
business projects, you know, I, I see a lot of um, parents, moms, especially, you know, it's hard to let go of, as the kids get older, they continue to do things for the kids. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's important to spend time together. It's important to maintain the strong attachment. Absolutely. Yeah. But you, know, you don't want to handicap your kids either. Yeah. So I would say use this, use this transit. If you have, you know, we're all going to have this abundance of energy, right? Use yes. the trance to do this transit to do things together where you are teaching your kids stuff, whether it's, it could be anything from running a business to cooking to whatever you guys like to do. Yeah. But and the activity bonds you together, right? The parent mm -hmm. and child. And I always say to parents, especially for boys, you know, boys bond through competition. So any, any games or new sports or anything yes. that you can do together, all that's good stuff. So use the energy to have these bonding experiences with your children, right? So as they get older, you know, that you, you maintain that strong attachment with them because kids oh, yeah. still need you. Even as you get older, I had a few reminders of that this week. And my son is almost 13 that even as they get older and they seem to be more independent, they still need the parents, right? Yes. The presence of the parents. So they still need you, even though it looks like they they don't or they think they don't they, think they, they don't. still very much need you so they still very much need the attachment with a parent so any activities you guys can do together including new projects you know mm -hmm. those are those are all great ways to bond so this is a good this i think this transit really supports those activities oh yeah for sure and then if you're busy i definitely think setting up more play dates Mm -hmm. right, with friends Absolutely. and getting them out doing activities to burn off that extra energy, you know, so they can settle mm -hmm. at night and they're calm their little minds being really physically activity and with their, their friends or sports, you know, baseball season, starting back up, getting back out and getting physical. And especially with school, they're all in school now and they get, you know, sitting all day is hard enough. Right. So there's additional anxiety and like, uh, I've noticed that just in two weeks, my son gets out of school. He's like, ah, you know, oh, yeah. so having those outlets for them to really burn off the day a little right. bit and settle. Right. And I like right. that attachment thing and the, and being right. able to do things together, you know, right. and, having, and being able to have good conversations about what's frustrating you, mm -hmm. what you're upset about or what's irritating you and why the same mm -hmm. way we're processing this stuff for ourselves. It's like, yeah, the kids, you know, he's adjusting to a new school, a new grade, mm -hmm. new friends, new subjects you know, and feeling really overwhelmed and stressed. And then it can come out as anger and, yeah. and talking back and the thing, you know, and, and struggling with being able to, to handle what they're feeling. Right. Absolutely. Getting yeah. Angry. Yeah. There'll so be a lot of like, happens. yeah, a lot of mental energy, a lot of overstimulating energy they're going to be feeling. And the kids don't always have the words to explain yes. what they're experiencing. So I would definitely caution parents, like you say, to be extra sensitive and extra understanding about this and instead yes. of reacting like thinking about it and being yes. curious about why are they acting like this and then check in with your kid hey is there something going on like do you want to yeah. talk about something as opposed to like reacting oh you talked back blah blah right. blah right? right so you want to really get to the root of what's happening yeah and if your little ones, I mean, when they're talking, they, they usually, a lot of them are really smart and being able to tell you what they think or what they feel, you know, mm -hmm. out of the mouths of babes, right? You're going right. to straight. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. For sure. And you're like, yeah. oh yeah, they checked me that that's true. You know? So there's that. And then if you have little ones and they're still, they, they have a hard time uh, communicating or mm -hmm. they're more shy or slow to warm up, or they um, aren't talking yet, you mm -hmm. can still feel that in their energy, you know, you'll be able to yeah, sort of can. sense that frustration. Yeah. There's more crying and whining, yes. you know, unhappiness and, yes. and, uh, you can sit they're they're restless and they need to do mm -hmm. something. So it's like, get them moving, get them right. outdoors, moving, running, you know, it doesn't have to be a sport, just get them oh, to yeah. the park and let them play freedom. Exactly. And meet exactly. other kids to play, to, you know, to be, you know, curious about the world. So that I think that physical and mental alignment really paying attention to the physical responses based on the mental overload or overwhelm as you said oh yeah absolutely but yeah all in all i think this is going to be a really positive transit for most people i do too really positive really productive has it with all the aspects it's making it's just going to be has the potential to be an extremely productive 
transit for you know emotions as well as kind of more practical things and projects with all the yeah. transits and stuff Pluto going direct so a lot of really good potential here I think so too I was you know nervous about it like a lot of people kind of yeah. oh, projecting yeah, into too. like oh my gosh you know and if you look at the world and all that stuff but I'm like after diving in a little deeper and looking at the big picture realizing man, there's a lot of really good stuff here and a lot of really great possibilities for you know, personal achievement, for mm-hmm. making real progress to understanding why we're, what our motivations are and why we're doing what we're doing and living in the way we are or relating in the way we are or connecting mm-hmm. the way we are. And um, yeah, certainly for me, I'm excited about having a lot more conversations with you Oh yeah, and, you know, doing Very talks excited. like these, um, you know, these cosmic wisdom and weather Right. I, yep, I think it's yep. really important to like talk about the weather and in terms of, you know, how we can prepare and how we can really make the most out of it and nurture the energies of the astrology for our own well being. And you have been stellar at bringing so much great insight to this big transit. And I'm so happy I kicked this off with you and my Gemini girl. And I'm sure we'll Absolutely. do more for sure. And, um, Definitely let us know if you're liking these kinds of uh, shows and we'll do more of them. But I thank you so much. This was great. I feel like there's a lot of good stuff here. It might even be worth listening to twice. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) Thank you, Dominique. Right. I'm going to listen to this twice. I feel like there's a lot of good stuff here. I might have missed. Right. Let me go back and listen to that again. So, you know, tag this one. Keep it on file for the next seven months. That's right. Come back to it. Right. So thank you so much, Bria. And I'm going to definitely be in touch. We're going to do some more of these great shows together. Fantastic. Love to. Thank you. Thanks everyone. And we'll see you on the next one.